month ago they were booing the Steelers. Today, the Steelers find themselves as they prepare for the Atlanta Falcons in second place in the AFC Central Division. Thanks to what Atlanta did to the Bengals a week ago, Pittsburgh right there in the hunt, only a game back. And hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler along with Dan Jiggetts. Welcome to Pittsburgh, where the Steelers have really turned it around. Dan, a one and three start. Now they're looking pretty good. Well, Brad, they got, got off to a slow start last year because they changed the defense. This year, they changed the offense. But you know what? The light has gone on for Bubby Brister. He was the AFC Offensive Player of the Month of October. So you know that the offense is cooking now. And the Atlanta offense likewise cooking. And they have things to the point where they're second in their division. And although the world champions are running away with things, Atlanta's in the playoff hunt, and they've won as many games as they did all of last year. And the key thing there is Jerry Glanville's really got his players believing they can win. And that's the key thing. The talent is almost equal throughout this league, but now they believe they can win football games. It is an absolutely beautiful day in Pittsburgh. 64 degrees at game time. Partly cloudy skies. You couldn't ask for more for a November afternoon in this part of the country. And two teams that may be more similar than they would like to admit ready to do battle. The Atlanta Falcons will kick off. Greg Davis will send it off to one of the most dangerous people in the NFL. Rod Woodson right there, number 26. And he may very well be one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, Brett. We're underway. A high short kick. The Steelers will have an up man take it at the 21-yard line, and the ball's loose, and Atlanta has covered it. Larry Griffin coughed up the football in Atlanta with a golden opportunity on the first play of the game. Roland Mitchell with the recovery. You have to believe in a game like this where things have matched up so evenly offensively and defensively that special teams may very well be the key to the ball game. Atlanta's been playing exceptionally well in special teams, and they just simply get after this one. Roland Mitchell with a recovery and the Falcons offense set to take the field behind Chris Miller. Brilliant 25-year-old quarterback who's really having himself a season. You know, speaking of Roland Mitchell, uh, yesterday when we talked with Jerry Glanville, he told us he's one of his headhunters. He's one of the guys you look for in the special teams. Mitchell will play in their nickel backfield, but for the most part, a special teams perfectionist. Chris Miller and his numbers on the season. Miller didn't have to throw too many times against the Bengals last Sunday night. It was mostly the Atlanta ground game. And we're... The play is being reviewed. Uh, that's got to be what's holding up the game. Chuck yeah. Noll looks out, and you can bet that is not the way he wanted this football game to start. Well, see, the key thing is, number one, you give up the football. But the other thing is you give up great field position. I mean, right now the ball is sitting between the 23 and 24-yard lines. Uh, for the Atlanta Falcons confirming the spot is apparently what the replay is all about I don't think there was any question the ball was loose or that Atlanta recovered review, the play stands fumble first down the words of Johnny Greer our referee and so the Atlanta offense in great shape just inside the Steeler 24 yard line Keith Jones and Steve Broussard in an eye backfield behind Chris Miller this is Broussard the rookie Flashing off the right side for only about a yard. Carnell Lake and Keith Willis in on the stop for Pittsburgh. Broussard, whose grandfather passed away yesterday, and there was question as to whether or not he would even take part in this game. And Jerry Glanville says, Steve, do what you have to do. And that's the thing about Glanville. I think, you know, a lot of people always talk about how, you know, he has the image and all the rest of that. But you see him do some things that are really quality things, and you have to appreciate that in a coach. Second down and eight, Atlanta. First quarter, no score, but Atlanta with one big special team play already. Broussard inside this time. Pinballs his way near the 17-yard line. The Falcons offensively. Mike Cann having a great year at age 34. Houston Hoover, Jamie Dukes, Bill Fralick playing here in Pittsburgh where he was a star in college. Chris Hinton and Troy Sadowski starts at tight end because Gary Wilkins was injured on the opening kickoff. There's the backfield, Jones and Broussard, Andre Risen, the NFL's leading receiver, and Sean Collins, the wideouts. And the Falcons now will go with a red gun, and they bring in two extra receivers in Floyd Dixon and George Thomas. Third down, Atlanta. Blitz coming. Atlanta covers it. Donald Evans made the hit. Yes. 
Steelers had a blitz coming on the backside. 95 Lloyd and 66 Evans. And Mike Kins put in a sweat there because he can't decide which guy to pick up. He tries to slow Evans up and then go out and pick up Lloyd. But uh, Evans gets to the ball carrier, the quarterback. So immediately a moral victory of sorts for the Pittsburgh defense as they force a 41-yard field goal attempt by Greg Davis. Davis 8 out of 11 on the year. Kick on its way, and it is right through the middle. So the Falcons capitalize on the opening kickoff turnover. And we have a penalty marker down as the Falcons with a three-point lead, 13.06 to go in the first quarter. And let's see what the marker's about. Maybe on Atlanta. Steelers are certainly indicating that. The Steelers are indicating a personal foul on Atlanta, which is kind of strange on a kick. But that is the call. Well, a lot of times it can be tripping or, you know, when the guy bumps on the corner, uh, you have to be careful about how you bump it if you stick your legs out and try to trip it. Let's see if it was a post play flag, though. Personal foul, 79 kicking team. After the score, 15 yards will be assessed on the kickoff. Bill Fralick got involved in a hurry. They'll assess it on the kickoff, but the field goal stays. Atlanta leads by three. Bill Fralick guilty of the personal foul on the field goal after the field goal, actually. So the 41-yard score by Greg Davis remains on the board. 3-0 Atlanta. Hey, he's back in his hometown. How else does an offensive lineman get his name mentioned, you know? <laughs> First time Freilich has played here since 82 when he was a member of the Pitt Panthers, an All-American. And he's got 40 or 50 friends and relatives here at the game today. So Davis has been busy. His opening kickoff was fumbled. He's hit a field goal, and now he's set to kick away to Rod Woodson again. Again, a short kick. Woodson, though, comes up the field at the 22. Broke a tackle. And Woodson gives the Steelers great field position across the 43-yard line. So the Steeler offense, led by Bobby Brister, comes out. And Brister has been red hot, as Dan said, the AFC Player of the Month after a slow start. And this is the group he's behind. Jackson, Blankenship, Dawson, Long. Ricketts is a change in there. Malarkey, the tight end. Yeah, uh, Tunch Oaken got hurt earlier in the week and during practice. Uh, he's the all-pro uh, offensive tackle. Merrill Hodge having a great year. Warren Williams, Lewis Lips, and Derek Hill, the wideouts. And the Steelers, first down, their own 44-yard line. The give is to Hodge. Not much. The Atlanta defense is stingy against the run. And that group for Atlanta, led by Torrey Epps, who just made that tackle at the nose. Mike Gann and Tim Green flank him in the 3-4 of Atlanta. Robert Lyles just acquired from the Oilers. Jesse Tuggle, the NFL's leading tackler. Rady and Connor, the other two backers. And the secondary, Dimry and Sanders on the corners. Brian Jordan and Scott Case are the safeties. Two tight ends set for the Steelers after a pickup of one by Hodge. Second down and nine. Lewis lips in motion. Hodge again with a hole this time. Crosses midfield before the Falcons can bring him down near the 48. It'll be third down at about two. Tim Green and Scott Case combined on the tackle. One of the things you know you're going to get when you play the Steelers is the trap game, and that's what they just did. Terry Long, number 74 for the Steelers, uh, sprung uh, Merrill Hodge that time, and, and that's what you're going to see all day from them. Atlanta likes to penetrate, get across the line of scrimmage, and the Steelers love to trap. It ought to be an interesting day up front. And the Steelers bring in the extra beef on the front line. Strelzik, the rookie, comes in as an extra lineman. Barry Foster, another rookie right there, number 29, will check in to the backfield. And a third down at two for Pittsburgh in Atlanta territory. Now the dual tight end set comes out to the near side in Malarkey and Green. And the Steelers will throw for it, maybe. Great pressure from Oliver Barnett, a rookie out of Kentucky. Forced Brister to get rid of that one. What can happen many times on short yardage situation is you, is you try to get aggressive up front. And when you do that, sometimes you slide off of a block or you simply miss a block. And that's what happened this time. And the, the Steelers slid down and didn't bother to turn back and block him. And the, the pressure got in on Bubby Brister. Foster, the rookie running back, kind of gave Brister one of those lookout blocks because he didn't get a hand on Barnett. And it forces Straczynski to punt. 
And Deion Sanders, is he dangerous? They'd like to hang it up so he can't return it. And this is a nice high kick. And the Steelers unable to knock that one back, a 48-yard kick. And they came close, but Lorenzo Davis couldn't get a hand on it. So a touchback, and the Falcons go to work at the 20. Fred, I was watching um, Strzenczyk, the uh, kicker, uh, at practice the last couple of days, and I think his, his uh, shortest punt in terms of hang time was about 4-6. And that really helps your coverage because what it means is that ball's up in the air and Deion Sanders is not able to return it. And last, on that last punt, he definitely did his job. It's just that Davis couldn't quite knock it back. It went in the corner of the end zone and Atlanta starts at the 20. 3-0. Falcons lead it 11-14 to go first quarter. In motion, Broussard. Stunning going on on the Pittsburgh defensive front. Miller has time, delivers to Wilkins, who was shaken up on the first play of the game and makes the catch there. You will not see a lot of reception from the Atlanta tight ends. And one of the things that's apparent, too, though, in the Atlanta offense is right now is, uh, is Chris Miller's using some snap count because when you see that movement up front, uh, usually they're trying to time it out so they can jump across the line of scrimmage on timing. And Chris Miller is using very effectively the snap count to slow that rush down. Pickup of about three on the short pass play. Second and seven coming up. Mike Rozier is checked in as the single back in the Atlanta four wide out offense. Floyd Dixon in motion. Rozier straight up the middle, a big hole. And Rozier out across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Just picked up from the Houston Oilers a couple of weeks ago. Well, I tell you, he, he ought to take care of Houston Hoover, number 69. Watch his block here. Down block. Mike Ken gets a nice block downfield. A couple of pancakes in there, and Mike Rozier hits the ball so well off of the blocks. You know, he, he really sets up his offensive lineman very nicely. And did he cover that ball after he got in the open with both arms draped around it? Got it to the 38-yard line, a pickup of 14. Jerry Glanville said he's a linebacker playing running back. He's got a linebacker's mentality. First down Atlanta at its own 38. They'll run it again. Rozier again to the 42, maybe the 43-yard line before Hardy Nickerson can make the tackle. The Steelers' defense is a good one. And here's a look. Willis, Williams, and Evans across the front wall. The linebacking core, Hinkle, Nickerson, David Little, and Greg Lloyd. Lloyd is one of the guys Glanville would love to have. The secondary, young, and maybe one of the best in the business. Johnson, Woodson, Lake, and Everett. One of the things that the Steelers have on defense is the fact that they have a lot of speed people out there. Greg Lloyd, 95. Uh, Carnell Lake at safety runs a 4-3-40. Second down and five, Atlanta. Rozier again. Across the 45 to the 46. And Dan, something that Jerry Glanville was telling us before the ball game, he said, you know, the fans in the stadium won't respect you if you come out passing the football. And he certainly hasn't as Rozier's down. Really felt that you had to come out and grind it out. And Mike Rozier is a big part of that part of the offense uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. And right now he's going over the sideline. Looks like he might be okay, though. The other thing is that Atlanta has all those all pros on that offensive line. You've got to expect that those guys want to line up and knock you off the football a little bit and give guys like Mike Rozier an opportunity to cut loose. Third down situation upcoming as Rozier heads to the sideline. See if we see the Atlanta Red Gun offense for the first time today. It's a four wide out set, but the official Red Gun is when Miller's in shotgun formation. He'll take it from Jamie Dukes up close. Dixon in motion. The Oilers do jump offside this time. The uh, Steelers, rather, with Williams, the nose tackle, jumping across. And once again, that's that hard snap count that uh, Miller's using. Defense. First down. A free first down for the Falcons. It's the old hut hut tweet. Hut hut. The second one, the first one, you jump off, the, then you hear the whistle blow. 
So Miller does a fine job in that respect here. And the Falcons, who started this drive at their own 20, have moved it across the midfield stripe. Brad, one of the things you do as an offensive lineman, you know you got that long, hard snap count. Is every now and then you want to twitch that hand or something just to give that guy that little thought in his mind that maybe you're getting ready to move. And then, and then all of a sudden that offensive line looks great. Five cheap yards. You mean you guys didn't always play it straight up there? <laughs> First down, Atlanta, with the ball just tucked inside Pittsburgh territory. Broussard, the tailback in the eye, and he gets the call. Somehow eked a yard out of that. Hardy Nickerson, uh, number 54, was really the key guy for the Steelers that time, just coming across and penetrating, and that broke up the play and broke up the flow of the play. Nickerson made the first hit. Brian Hinkle finished the running back off after a gain of one. Second down and nine. 7.40 to go first quarter. Atlanta leads it 3-0 on Greg Davis' 41-yard field goal. And the Falcons have not passed much in this football game. And now we do see the red gun officially for the first time today. Miller works from the shotgun. Miller out in the flat to Broussard. It's a screen that never developed. He might have to do it on his own. And he does. Doesn't get the first down, but he got good yardage. He's only about a yard shy. It was a screen that turned into a brick wall. <laughs> One of the things that Broussard does so well is he has that timing now that, you know, you let the play develop a little bit. Speed is not necessarily the important thing. It's the understanding of letting your players get out in front of you and throw their blocks and then react off of that. He actually waited out there and tried to wait for Jamie Dukes and company, and he did get a block from one of the men up front and got it close. But now they say he stepped out of bounds at the 44-yard line. I thought he got it down to the 41, so mark it at the 44. And Atlanta's going to take a timeout. 6.58 to go first quarters. Chris Miller and Brian Hinkle head to the sidelines. It's Atlanta by three. Atlanta by a field goal, 6.58 to go first quarter. And why the Atlanta timeout, Dan? Well, I think it's a sign of Chris Miller's maturity. The, the situation changed. He thought he was going to have a three, uh, third down and one, and it was third and four because of the adjustment the officials made. He realized he didn't have the right call, uh, play call, so he just decided to go to the sideline and get everything squared away. Good use of a timeout in that situation. Prime time. Hasn't been on the field much. The Atlanta defense has been out there three plays. He's been back in punt return formation once. And he hopes his offense stays out there. Third and four Atlanta. From the red gun. Dixon in motion. Miller wide opens Dixon. He's got the first down near the 35-yard line. Floyd Dixon, who had only two catches last week, but both were touchdowns in the win over Cincinnati. And they know, uh, that is, the Falcons know that the uh, defense of the Steelers will allow you to throw underneath. They don't want to get beat deep. That's their philosophy. Uh, Dave Brazil, their offensive coordinator right there in the middle of your screen, said, hey, look, we understand that the fact that if they can't kill you, if they have to keep chipping away at it in front of you, just don't let them get in back of you. And everything has been short. Chris Miller is three for three. He had a three-yard pass, a four-yard pass, and then the first down toss there to Dixon. Broussard, the tailback in the Atlanta eye on first down. Broussard toss sweep. Nice job by Greg Lloyd to stretch it out, no game. And what really happened there, Brad, was Houston Hoover, number 69, was trying to pull out from his left guard position and never really got out and hit the corner, got jammed up inside, and as a result, Broussard had to run uh, out there by himself. Houston Hoover, a guy that's played guard and tackle over the past couple years for Atlanta. They really like this young man. And he has taken John Scully's spot on that left guard position now. I tell you Scully what, went down with the injury. If you ask him, I'm sure he enjoys being inside stood out on that island. He does too. Right now. Here's a red gun for Atlanta. Second and ten at the Steeler 35. Pittsburgh thinking about a blitz here. Here it comes. Miller to Milling to the 28-yard line. That'll be a pickup of close to seven. Dwayne Woodruff, the last remaining member of the old Super Bowl teams over there to make the hit. Dwayne Woodruff Esquire. He is an attorney. And uh, there's Johnson over in the sideline that looks like they're working on his knee or his ankle. There's another Steeler coming off. Uh, Keith Willis. Sideline. Keith Willis. 
Yeah, you see Woodruff still has those Super Bowl rings for them. Tucked away nicely. Third down Atlanta. They've been successful on their third down conversions to this point. And they may not be this time. Bouchard won't get it. The new wave steel curtain makes the hit. BC and Williams the first two to meet him and we'll see another field goal attempt by Atlanta. Mike Rozier is headed to the locker room for x-rays on his ribs. He may have been in on that play in that situation uh, if he was all right. And really what the Steelers did was they brought the linebackers, the inside linebackers up tough and you know three, four yards off the ball and that really causes problems when you try to run up the gut of that defense with those linebackers standing inside and standing tough. Greg Davis has hit from 41. This is a 43 yard attempt. And again, right down the middle for Greg Davis. Four minutes, 25 seconds to go first quarter on Greg Davis, two field goals, Atlanta by six. Well, the Falcons went 54 yards in 649, 10 plays to get a field goal, leading 6-0 with 425 to go in the first quarter. David Johnson over there on the sideline with a sprained knee, we understand. Davis, another high, short kick. And again, one of the up men on the special teams has to take it, and Tippins will drop Jerry Olsowski at about the 27-yard line. So Davis is getting great hang time on his kicks. That's about all we can say for his kickoff. Well, he's trying to make the big guys with tape on their hands catch the ball, too. Bobby Brester brings out the Steelers' offense, an offense that definitely struggled the first month of the season. And look at the comparison here, Dan. Hey, he said, you know, they really got some things straightened out, though, with the formations not coming in with the player that's relaying the play in. That's being signaled in from the sideline now, the formation, because there's a lot of verbiage. And Chuck Knowles said that Bubby was having a little problem with that. But you can see the numbers have just exploded in the last uh, four games offensively for the Steelers. And Joe Walton, the offensive coordinator, with the hat turned backwards. The ball is dead. The catch. First down. There was a fair signal catch on the kickoff. And Woodson comes up, realizes that he can't close in, and then you see up above him, uh, there is a fair catch signal made by Gerald Williams, who's a linebacker. I and know the linebackers knew how to make uh, fair catch signals. And Olsowski wasn't the guy that made the fair catch call, so it was dead right there at the 28-yard line, first down. Warren Williams inside. Trap play got him out near the 32. Tim Green and Mike Gann, the defensive ends for Atlanta, combine on the stop. One of the things you want to watch today on, along that defensive line for the Atlanta Falcons is how Tor uh, Torrey Epps is playing. He, that time he penetrated very tough. And uh, speaking of penetrating very tough, that Atlanta offense kept the ball for 10 plays, went 54 yards, and the key thing is they used up a lot of time on the clock. And they have still only thrown four passes offensively. They're doing it on the ground. It's Torrey Epps, the rookie nose tackle. Second and six. Dwight Stone in motion for Pittsburgh. Brister looks that way. Got it to him. First down, Steelers at the 42-yard line. Good-looking play. Robert Lyles made the first hit. Charles Dimery helped out on the tackle. The Steelers said they're going to look for in their passing game is uh, to look at the cornerbacks and see if they can get them to get out of that back pedal. They want to try to get them to switch, turn their hips and switch out. And if they can get them to do that, they feel they can work the underneath stuff. And then at some point or another, they want to go up top. Dimry has been picked on this year, especially by the 49ers. He settled in last week and had a good game, though, against Cincinnati. Look at the difference in Brister the first month and the second month. And he was complete to stone for the first down. And now back to the trapping ground game, Merrill Hodge. The ball is loose. Atlanta says they have it. And they do. Scott Case comes up with a football. And the question here is going to be, did the ground cause the fumble? And I'm sure that's what the Steelers are going to argue. And when we see it on replay, watch and see if, as Merrill Hodge goes down, does the ground cause the fumble or does someone pull it out? He's going down to the ground right there, and the ball is popping out. It was not the ground. That's the fumble all the way. He put his hand down. The question is fall, and that might be the difference. Right. But, you know, the other thing they're going to have to look at on replay, I'm sure, is whether or not his knees were down. Right. Right. They'll take a look at this. The ball's at the 45. Will it be Atlanta's or Pittsburgh's? Certainly the crowd is looking for uh, 
a replay here. Yeah, Al there they go. will be the guy that will give us the official word. And Johnny Greer, our referee, will let us know. Art McNally, the head of officials, is here today, too. So we'll get this one in two minutes. <laughs> we'll get another look at it right here. Here's another peek. Let's just see, number one, are his knees down? Is he down on the ground? No, he's still leaning out as that ball is, is uh, pushed out of there. And I believe that was uh, Tim Green that pushed it out. That's a fumble. And Scott Case is a man that covered it. It would be his second fumble recovery in as many weeks if it holds. And as we said, El Sabato will tell us in a second. Clock stop with 2.47 to go first quarter. And the Falcons on two Greg Davis field goals lead 6-0. And this would be their second fumble recovery if indeed this play stands. Scott Case was on top of the ball. Veteran out of Oklahoma. Well, since he's moved to safety, he's really developed a, a nose for those fumbles. <laughs> he loves that spot back there. Fumbles and interceptions. And obviously, you know what Joe Walton thinks of turnovers. Here we go. The Atlanta offense is staying put, and so is the Pittsburgh defense. After further review, the play stands. Fumble recovery for Atlanta at the Pittsburgh 45. Falcons are four for four passing. They've done most of their damage on the ground. Straight ahead to the 40-yard line. And a pickup of five for Jones. Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh is sold out. And in fact, they said with the beautiful weather, we may indeed have a record crowd here today. If you can believe that after all the Super Bowl teams that have played here. And the Atlanta Falcons on two field goals, leading 6-0 over the Steelers with 2.23 in the clock running first quarter. And the story has been the, the turnovers by the Steelers uh, offensively and on special teams. That's really what's put Atlanta ahead in this ballgame so far. They dropped the opening kickoff. And they did it just a moment ago as well. And the Falcons have a second and five at the Pittsburgh 40. Broussard will lose yardage this time. Brian Hinkle stretched it out nicely. And you want to know how important lead blocking is. It looks like Hinkle got a shot in the ribs there, too. Steelers are losing a lot of defensive uh, personnel in this ball game so far. But you want to know how important it is on a lead block by the fullback. Watch Keith Jones here, number 38, as he goes out to throw his block on Hinkle. Hinkle just slid right off it like they always train linebackers to do and gets in and makes the play. Loss of two, it's third down and seven. Hinkle, one of the veterans on this team, has been around nine years. The Falcons from the red gun. Four wideouts on third and seven. Miller in trouble. Got it on the run to Milling and a first down inside the Pittsburgh 30. We talked to Jerry Glanville. He said one of the things he really likes about Chris Miller is the way he sees the whole field. And that's a prime example of it. Now watch the play up at the top. Milling's coming from the top in the slot. And what happens is that when they come down, he's going to break in there. Now watch. That's the movement that you want to see. Chris Miller doesn't see anything right now. Now he sees Milling over in that sideline. Excuse me, he's all the way over in the sideline. He uncovers and breaks back towards the middle and uh, gets himself open for the reception. You said a moment ago that the Steelers will give you some things underneath. That's the longest completion for the Falcons, and it was only a pickup of 15 yards. First down, Atlanta. Chris Miller, perfect so far. Jones, maybe a yard. That's about all inside. Donald Evans. Made the first hit. Got help from VC on the nose. Maybe our final play of the first quarter. Chris Miller will head to the sidelines. And the Atlanta Falcons have controlled the clock. And they have controlled the turnovers. Forced them and covered them. And they have the lead at the end of the first 15 minutes of play as the Steelers will regroup on their sideline. We've played a quarter. At Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, and the Falcons lead the Steelers 6 0.
Back at Three River Steady in Pittsburgh to start the second quarter. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets with you. Atlanta leading 6-0, and Bobby Brister hasn't had much of a chance out there, Dan. No, he sure hasn't, but he's talking to Terry Long over there on the sidelines. He, offensive linemen like to talk about the action, and Bobby Brister's got an offensive lineman's personality, so he's probably down there with Terry Long talking about, you know, did you hit the guy real hard on the play? I mean, what kind of a block was it? He's probably also saying to Terry, you know, Chris Miller had the ball over 11 minutes in that first quarter, and we didn't. Falcons driving again. Second down and long. At the Pittsburgh 26. Andre Risen in motion. Steve Broussard. Flags are down. As Broussard is run out of bounds by Dwayne Woodruff. It'll be a holding call against Atlanta as a preliminary uh, signal. That happens so many times when you try to stretch a play outside and you see that movement going all the way to the sideline and you know, usually somebody's got a grip on somebody's jersey. Holding, 71 offense. Still second down. Chris Hinton. The man they call Yogi. <laughs> Boy, you better be a friend if you call him that. <laughs> He's a load, isn't he? He really is. A, I don't know, six-time All-Pro. Uh, I, I was talking to Ken Hirock, the uh, vice president of personnel for the uh, Falcons, before the game, and I said, you know, they should have taken your fingerprints on that deal with Indianapolis. Boy. They took, he got Evan Risen and a number one for Jeff George, who they couldn't use anyway. <laughs> Gary Glanville says, we actually thought a lot of Jeff George, but we didn't know what we had in number 12 until we got going. And Chris Miller has been brilliant so far. Let's see what he does with a second and 19 with a red gun offense. Miller has time. Across the middle on a short gain of about six to the 30 to Floyd Dixon. Brian Hinkle in on the stop. One of the things that's apparent about uh, the Atlanta offense right now is they've, this, they've decided to be very patient and just keep taking what the defense is giving them. Don't get greedy, but burn up the clock. And we talked about that time of possession. That's what it really falls into. And when you get down inside the 20, we know that Atlanta is very successful inside the 20 in scoring, in scoring touchdowns, not just field goals. They're going to have to pick up 13 yards to get the first down inside the 20. Again, from the red gun with Dixon in motion. Flags down, maybe a free play for Miller, and he got it to Sean Collins. Collins to the 21. I thought maybe Pittsburgh was offside on the left defense. Gerald side. Williams, uh, number 57, just blasted across. That's the call, and it will make it a more manageable third down and eight for Atlanta after they walk this off. Because Collins did not have the first down with the pass reception. He was about four yards short. And that's what Chris Miller and Johnny Greer are talking about right now. Onside, 57 defense. Still third down. Chris Miller using uh, that snap count very effectively. See that hard shoulder there? And see, all of those little things really throw the defense off because they're looking for movement. Any little twitch, and they're gone. And Gerald, uh, Gerald Williams may find it difficult to hide at 6'5", 244 pounds at an outside linebacking position. When he moves, people know. <laughs> Third down and eight, Atlanta. Six defensive backs in for Pittsburgh. Ryzen in motion. Maybe should have had it. Rod Woodson was covering it. It would have been a first down had he been able to bring it down. It was a difficult one for him, I think, to pick off because he was working back and the ball is high. Uh, when you're working back to the quarterback, he did the right thing trying to uncover and coming back to the quarterback. One of the things the Steelers like to do, as we told you, they can use their safeties uh, because they have so much speed in the nickel situation. And here they have six defensive backs lined up inside. That's a dime package for the Steelers. You can see them all up there in a little cup. Greg Davis is hit from 41 and 43. Why not try from 42? No good this time. It drifted off to the right a bit for him. Big emotional turning point for the Steelers. Still Atlanta by six.
CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Cadillac. Discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. Kentucky Fried Chicken, nobody's cooking like today's KFC. And by United Airlines, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Dave Brazil, the defensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers, told me that when his defense stops an offense like they just did, uh, and you look at the first series, even when the uh, Falcons had to settle for field goals off the turnovers, that's almost like an offensive play for them. That's like scoring points to them because uh, they really feel good about themselves when they're able to accomplish something like that in those tough situations. And Joe Green down on that sideline knows a few things about tough situations. Knows a little bit about playing defensive line. The new steel curtain. And their pass defense ranked third, just prevented that third down conversion by Atlanta, and then the missed field goal. Maybe so now, no harm. Maybe now it's the titanium curtain. <laughs> Steelers have not had the ball offensively much in this game. Eric Green, their rookie tight end in motion. Brister to Green. Three Falcons ringing down. I think maybe a face mask mixed in there. Flag goes down. Looked as though maybe Jesse Tuggle or Scott Case got a piece of face mask on the big fella. If you're over there in that Falcon defense, you try to grab a hold of anything you can with Eric Green running the football. And I tell you what, if you try to grab him around the legs, you better have two guys trying to wrap around this fella. Chuck Noll told us they call him Big Smooth. Now, it's a little delay here. He's going to block down first on Connor, the uh, linebacker, and then he's going to release out on a slow block. Brister throws the football to him in good shape outside. There you, you see, see that Tuggle. face mask right there by Jesse Tuggle. So that tacks on to the end of the play at a first down Pittsburgh at its own 35 yard line. Six nothing Atlanta here in the second quarter. Just under 12 and a half minutes to play till halftime. Bobby Brister changes things at the line. Time to throw and overshot his intended receiver, Lewis Lips, and Deion Sanders let Lewis Lips know he was there. Lewis Lips uh, told me, though, he says, hey, look, I'm going to line up, and we're going to test these guys a little bit. He said, it's okay to talk about how good you are, but we're going to test them out a little bit. Well, that time, Deion was equal to the task, but you see Lewis. He says, I'll be hey, back. We're going to be back. <laughs> Deion Sanders, the flamboyant second-year cornerback for Atlanta. Saw Bubby Brister check off that time. He said that's one of the differences now. He's learned when to check off in Joe Walton's system and go to the audibles. Feels very comfortable doing it. Now. Hodge and Williams in a dual set behind Brister, and that's Derek Hill in motion. Williams cuts back against the grain and didn't get much, and another flag goes down. Mike Gann made that tackle. We have a holding call inside on Pittsburgh. This will take away what the Steelers gained from the Atlanta face mask. Here's Johnny Greer. Holding. Holding. 63 offense. Still second down. Dermani Dawson, the center, guilty second that time. Dermani Dawson at the center position for the Steelers is a guy who they think has one of some of the fastest hands in the NFL. You know, it's important for centers to have fast hands when they snap the ball to get them back up and get them on the body of somebody. That time he had fast hands, but he was slow getting them off the outside the framework <laughs> third penalty against the Steelers they lead the league in penalties most people would think watching this game it's Atlanta that does but the Falcons are way down the list they're not in the top five I'm sure that disturbs them <laughs> Brister over the middle three to the 42 Ryan Jordan brought him down his second catch this one good for 17 yards one of the things you have to respect with a, a young man like Eric Green is the fact that he's got downfield speed for a guy his size, 6'5", 280 pounds. And that time, uh, the Falcons were laying off him a little bit, and he just settled down in and found a hole, settled down in and made a nice reception. There's his number, six touchdowns in the last four games. He's dragging his average down, though. Usually it's a touchdown every couple of receptions. Third down and three, Pittsburgh. And they'll work from the shotgun. Bell 
And Bell would have had a first down and a lot more, and Brister is well aware of that. Well, he know he rang the bell. I mean, he put the ball right into his chest, and he just simply dropped the football. Bobby Brister knows he's got the offense clicking now. It's doing exactly what he wants it to do. Throws the ball out to the bell. No question he should have had the reception. Just took his eye off of it to turn around and run before he caught it. Straczynski to punt. His first one went 48 yards. He'll try, as we said, to get a great hang time because Deion Sanders is so dangerous back there as a punt returner. Nice kick. Flag down. Sanders called for the fair catch and then let it go. It makes the end zone. And let's see what the marker is about. Get your goddamn hand are they saying that someone bumped into Dion when he made the signal? He made the signal, then tried to get out of the way of the ball. Or maybe that Atlanta attempted to make a block. I don't know what the call is going to be. We'll just have to wait and see. 58-yard kick. Don't feel bad. I don't think they know right now. <laughs> There's another look at it from the end zone. Gun back. He signals clearly fair catch. Steps up. No one touched him. Might have been a clip or an illegal block on the man coming down right. for the Falcons. That indeed looks at what it's like. The illegal block. Number 39. Receiving team. With a half a distance from the foul. Boy, I tell you what, it wasn't much of a block by Roland Mitchell either. Illegal or not. He barely got a hand. Should have called, called that one an illegal look. 6 nothing, Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta had its own nine-yard line, but with the lead, 6 nothing. Sign says avoid Lloyd. That's a <laughs> that's probably a pretty good suggestion. Greg Lloyd uh, takes Taekwondo. These guys are telling me he's a black belt, and they said with the body that he's got, guys asking him, can I borrow your body on the weekend? <laughs> Jerry Glanville says he is on my all-nasty team. He said, I would love to have that football player. And now the crowd will get into it for the Pittsburgh defense. Miller to throw. And going deep for Ryzen. Woodson with pretty good coverage, but a flag down. All the way, all the way. He had the penalty all the way. As soon as he got turned and he knew he was beat, that's when he pushed the receiver, Andre Risen. Woodson can't believe it. Oh, yeah. He, if he sees the replay, he's going to believe it. So Andre Risen, the NFL's leading receiver, doesn't get a catch, but he gets a big penalty here. Down about 30 yards. See right there, it's a little hitch and go. And right now, he got him spun around. And watch Woodson come in right there and put the hands on Ryzen. And clearly, the question is, was the ball catchable? Yes, it was catchable. You're not allowed to touch that receiver in that situation. Yeah, you're right. Ryzen could have gotten to that ball, I think. 40-yard penalty. A free one for Atlanta. And the Falcons have it at the 49-yard line, first down. Straight ahead, Rozier. It's 6 nothing here. Let's get an update on what's going on down the river. And we go to New York and Greg Gumbel. Well, Brad, at Riverfront in Cincinnati, the New Orleans Saints have been running the ball on the Bengal defense today. Second rushing touchdown of the day. This one, Reuben Mays from six yards out. And with the point after, New Orleans has a 14 nothing lead at Cincinnati. Let's go back to Three Rivers, Brad and Dan. Boy, the Cincinnati Bengals yeah. wondering why they have to play the NFC West. They may, yeah, they may want to move east or something. <laughs> it's been a tough go for them. Under 10 minutes, this has not been the high-scoring affair that we thought it may be. 6-0 Falcons on two Greg Davis field goal. Chris Miller on the roll. And he got it to Andre Risen. And Risen lost the ball, but it goes out of bounds. So to this point, it's been the Atlanta defense stifling the Pittsburgh offense and the key, really, a couple of turnovers. You're right, Brad. Those turnovers are really uh, changed into uh, to points for the Falcons. But uh, interestingly enough, though, the Steelers' defense has really kept the Falcons from getting down there and punching the ball in like they normally do when they get inside the 20. 
You saw Chris Miller's numbers, seven out of eight. The last one good for 10 yards and a first down to Andre Risen, who lost a couple when the ball came loose. But still, Atlanta has it at the Pittsburgh 38. Rozier and Johnson stay in there in a dual backfield, and Atlanta stays with a straight offensive set and continuing to run the football. Nothing doing for Rozier this time. Brian Hinkle, the first man there. And then it was Little and Woodson and all the rest of the black jerseyed Steelers. See, so much of what happens in offensive football happens up front. That time, Houston Hoover's trying to get his block. His man penetrates, jams up the play, and then all of a sudden, Mike Rozier doesn't have anywhere to run. He's got to try to avoid the block, get around the block, and then get back upfield. Uh, good play that time by the Steelers' defensive line. And it's still second down and 10, and the Atlanta Red Gun will go to work here. Four wideouts. Sean Collins... Floyd Dixon and Andre Risen all to the top of your screen. James Milling wide to the right. Miller from the red gun. Across the middle to Collins. And he's got the first down near the Pittsburgh 25. Let's get another update on that Cincinnati New Orleans game. We go back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Brad, watch Boomer Esaias and find Eddie Brown just at the goal line, and he barely gets his feet in before he's knocked down. It's now 14-7 Saints, second quarter. Back to Three Rivers. And here at Three Rivers, just under eight minutes to go till halftime. Atlanta leading 6-0. And another impressive drive by Atlanta. Chris Miller has not thrown long, but he's been effective. This time, they'll work the red gun on first down. Again, a trio of receivers to the left. Miller rolls that way. And a one-hopper to Andre Risen. Maybe the first bad pass today by Chris Miller. Andre Risen really feels that he's got a lot to prove here today against the Steelers. You know, the story was that uh, when he was getting drafted, the Steelers were talking to him on a telephone at the same time they were talking to Tim Worley. And uh, he thought he was going to go to the Steelers and because George Perlis was an old-time Steeler coach, was his coach at uh, Michigan State. And all of a sudden, he's talking to the Steelers, but they're drafting Tim Worley on uh, on television, and he was very upset. He's, you know, has a lot to prove today. He says he wants to make them know that they made a mistake. I think they know that already. <laughs> they would love to have had him along with Tim Worley. Colts probably think they made a mistake, too. They did. <laughs> Dixon in motion. Broussard, not much. A couple of yards, maybe. Gerald Williams made the tackle. Next week, a great college football matchup on Saturday for you. As Notre Dame and Tennessee will do battle. Notre Dame likely to be the new number one team in the country after Georgia Tech's upset over Virginia yesterday. And Leslie Visser and Mike Francesa get it all underway with the college. Andrea Joyce, I'm sorry. <laughs> Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa get it underway with the college football today. Next Saturday at 2 o'clock. Leslie sitting back in the studio going, thanks, Brad. <laughs> Get that extra pop in. Third down. <laughs> Miller dances out of trouble. And Hinkle got to him before he reached the 20-yard line. And once again, that Steeler defense uh, bristling up as the uh, Falcons close in near the uh, red zone. After talking with the defensive lineman of the uh, Steelers, they said that, uh, you know, Keith Willis has been around about nine or ten years, said, I don't want to try to teach the other defensive linemen, the young guys, what to do. We got Joe Green over in that sideline. Who better to tell you how to play defensive line? Davis is hit from 41 and 43, missed from 42, this one from 38, and he got it. So the Falcons' offense has all been on the leg of Greg Davis today, and they lead 9-0. Joe Walton, the Steelers offensive coordinator, and Bobby Brister, who didn't see eye-to-eye -eye necessarily the first part of the season. I think one of the problems was the fact that there was a lot to assimilate for Bobby, and, you know, he felt comfortable doing the things that he did last year, but in order for this offense of the Steelers to grow and get better, they had to change some things, and they had to, to do things differently, and finally they've, uh, they've gotten everything on the same page. Davis to kick again, high and short, and again a fair catch called for and taken by Woodson. Now he can't run with that, and another flag goes down. This time, 
Williams, the linebacker, one of the up men, made the fair catch call. I don't know if Woodson saw it. He fielded it and took off. And you are not allowed to take off with a ball once a fair catch is called for. Watch Williams Watch on the left side. Left of side of your screen. That's it. There it is. See, uh, that's one of the problems with having defensive players not <laughs> involved in an offensive play. They don't understand there all the rules. There is no penalty. The player who made the fair catch signal did not make the catch. Pittsburgh, first down. So the Steelers will work on offense here in the home turf of Three River Stadium, where they trail the Atlanta Falcons 9-0 on three Greg Davis field goals, and the Steelers have had only 10 plays from scrimmage on offense. That's been the story. With just under six minutes to go first half, they just haven't had the ball. Much like Atlanta's game last week against Cincinnati. Steelers from their own 25. Here's Williams. Got a couple. Toggle there along with Mike Gann. And the Atlanta defense has been very stingy all year against the rush. In fact, they come in third in the league against the run. And everybody thinks, well, why don't the Steelers put the ball in the air? Why don't they try to test that uh, pass defense of the Atlanta Falcons? Well, one of the problems is that the pass defense has gotten a lot better over the last couple of weeks. And the Steelers really don't have an offense that goes deep an awful lot. It's a lot of underneath short stuff. A lot of folks know the Falcons have a gambling type of defense where they blitz a lot and leave their defensive backs in man-to-man -man coverage. Not necessarily the case. They've kind of laid off the blitz so far today. Second and seven. Brisker to Stone. First down, Pittsburgh. Eon Sanders made the stop, but Dwight Stone has it to midfield. 22-yard gain. With Dwight Stone. his speed knows that he's got about 4-2 speed so what happens on the play is that he gets Dion turned around Dion's looking inside Dwight breaks outside and makes the reception Dwight Stone has started as a running back here in Pittsburgh most recently now a wide receiver and he has tremendous speed 4-2-5 in the 40 so watch out if he ever gets open in the Atlanta secondary Bangs his way for about five yards off the left side. Merrill Hodge is the perfect running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's a roll up your sleeves type of a guy. Get some nice blocking up front from his offensive line. Right, uh, right guard 74. Terry Long with the trap block right in there on Connor. See, that's the kind of stuff that you really want. That kind of blocking is, is what really gets offensive backs excited. When they get that kind of blocking out of their offensive line, and it even gets offensive linemen excited. And Hodge picked up five on that one. Second and five coming up. Tenth round draft choice out of Idaho State. He was the professional athlete of the year in Idaho. They gave him a two-day event out there in Pocatello, didn't they? <laughs> Williams on the sweep. Atlanta stretches it out pretty well, and Dimry knocked him out of bounds after a pickup of two. Fred, when I was talking with Jerry Glanville about how to block the defense that he's got it. When I was with the Bears, we used to go down and practice against the Falcons in a three- or four-day event. And one of the things we always did was we sent the backside uh, guards and tackles downfield and also had our receivers blocking downfield to take out all the pursuit because what he always tries to do is get his defense to get 11 guys to the football. You've got to send your backside people downfield, and I know what that takes. That takes a lot of extra effort, so sometimes linemen don't want to go all the way down there. Third down for the Steelers. They're 0 for 2 on their third down conversions today. Third and three. Lewis Lips in motion. Brister over the middle, and Rady almost picked that off, intended for Lewis Lips. And the Steelers will have to give it up, so that improved Atlanta pass defense you just talked about, Dan, comes through there. And uh, Bobby Brister, if he looks at this uh, game film, and he'll know that he threw right in the coverage on this situation. Lewis Lips with a stop route in there. Eric uh, Green doing the same thing, and there's no question he threw in the double coverage there, and John Rady almost comes up with a pick. Straczynski to punt. He's boomed a couple today. Deion Sanders, who took one 79 yards for a touchdown last week. Back for Atlanta. Straczynski will try to hit one out of bounds here. Fair catch called for by Sanders, and the 
the Steelers have this one covered. Beautiful job as the ball goes out at the three-yard line. Krasinski gives up average to make sure that he can get the coverage and get the hang time, but we got a flag down on the play. Oh, boy, well, that changed things. Holding against Pittsburgh. Negates a 55-yard punt that had Atlanta in a deep hole. Had some weird penalties today, haven't we? <laughs> you know, I was watching uh, Straczynski the other day at practice, though, and uh, the special teams coach, George Stewart. Holding number 60 on the kicking team. Repeat fourth down. There's George Stewart, the special teams coach. He was watching him uh, kick into the end zone and kick to the coffin corner. And he was so effective at it. I think five out of six times, he put him out between the five and the, and the uh, goal line. Penalty was on Brian Blankenship that time. The Steelers' fifth penalty for 70 yards. Of course, a 40-yard penalty on Woodson's interference with Ryzen. And that one takes away an excellent punt by Straczynski, who's set to do it again. Atlanta would like to get just enough pressure so he doesn't hang it so high and give Dion a chance to run it back. He hit this one a mile in the air. Fair catch. Called for and taken at the 12 yard line. Over five seconds in the air that time. Atlanta leads it by nine. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets back with you at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh. 2.28 to go in the half. Atlanta on three Greg Davis field goals, leading 9 0. And the Atlanta defense has done a nice job. They have done an excellent job, and I think one of the things they, they're accomplishing today that they really wanted to do coming in is, is shutting down that Steeler uh, uh, trap game so far today. Atlanta with the ball at their own 13-yard line again, not the greatest field position in the world. Last time they went deep to Ryzen and got the penalty. This time they keep it on the ground, and Rozier, with a good second effort, got it across the 15. Doubleheader week next week here on CBS and the same Falcons against the big bad Chicago Bears in game one and then the Giants and the Rams on the West Coast the Rams struggling and the Giants are just simply running away with it but it all gets started with the NFL today 12 30 Eastern next week an NFL doubleheader here on CBS Sports Chuck Knoll Steelers down by nine 204 to go in the half Jerry Glanville and Chuck Knoll have kept it very low key about their rivalry this week. Tell us what you told both those guys yesterday. Well, I told them they're probably more alike than they are different, and both of them had the same <laughs> exact reaction. Eyebrows raised, they almost fell out of their chairs. And neither made a comment, just the eyebrows <laughs> way up on the forehead. But I think what they really do is they like to play hard-nosed, tough football, and, and that's pretty basic. Uh, you know, what I'd like to have seen is when Chuck was a player and Jerry's a player, to see both of them line up against each other. I think that would have been a wonderful matchup. They probably still love to line up against each other. <laughs> 204 to go in the half. Steelers having called that timeout, hoping to stop Atlanta. And they do again. And now the two-minute warning will stop them. And the Falcons will have a third down situation. As we almost had a fight following that play. Uh, Bill Fralick just gave Hardy Nickerson that last little shove just before he got up. Two-minute warning. Atlanta with a 9-0 lead. Back in Pittsburgh, two-minute warning with Atlanta out in front, 9-0. Bill Fralick, uh, Jerry Glanville said he's got the right attitude. He kind of sets the tone. Now, on this play, he's working against Hardy Nickerson, number 54 up there. And watch uh, Fralick. He gets the pancake block. He's got a little bit of the back of Nickerson. Now he slams him on the ground. Now watch this. This is that attitude that Glanville is talking about. Nickerson's trying to get up. He just kind of pushes his face. Conrad Dover's got nothing on Bill Fralick. Fralick, a three-time All-American for the Pitt Panthers. Played here in this area, grew up here. A lot of family and friends out to watch him against the Steelers today. Falcons with a red gun on third down and five. Wide open is Andre Risen, and he steps out of bounds at the 34-yard line. First down, Atlanta. And what a catch by Andre Risen. Turns back around, does the one-hand stab on the sideline. Now, he's got that Pittsburgh Steelers secondary thinking, hey, Andre might be going deep. You see how he pushes it upfield. Now he breaks his break out. Look at the cushion that Carnell Lake has to give him. Seven, eight yards even off of the break. When Carnell Lake made his turn, by the time he got turned back around, it was about a six-yard difference, and Risen picks well, up 16. Turn and burn. <laughs> Just like those fighter pilots. 
you what Lake will remember that one. He's a good one. Second year out of UCLA, a former outside linebacker, so he can hit you. Atlanta first down at its own 34. They go back to the ground game. And Nickerson wants a little piece of somebody in Atlanta jersey. And now he and Chris Hinton go at it a bit. I really thought that on that play, Mike Rozier had a lot of running room outside. He hit the ball up inside pretty good, but I think if he had bounced it out, he might still be uh, running down the field. Here, watch out on the outside of this play. Gets good backside blocking by Mike Ken, and let's see what he sees there. Oh, we lost that one. If I'm Atlanta, I'm hurrying up this offense a little bit. They have wasted about 20 seconds, 120 to go in the half, and it would only take a couple decent pass plays to have a shot at a field goal. Nice play fake by Miller. Wilkins, the tight end. And there's one of the pass plays. That gets Atlanta to the Pittsburgh 40. Ball comes loose. And they're going to blow it dead. The officials will blow that one dead. Pickup of 23 yards. And the Pittsburgh defense is upset about that one. And, well, they should be. About eight guys had shots at Wilkins. And he just stood them all up and just kept pulling his way down the field. So Atlanta driving with 55 seconds to go in the half. The replay of that last play. And now watch here if Wilkins is stripped of the football by David Little, who is about the fourth or fifth player to hit him. Now he gets open in there behind his own. Now watch him here. One shot. A second one coming up after Woodson right there. And that's Lloyd. Third shot there. And finally, David Little comes in with... Probably what happened was the whistle had blown the play dead already because they recognized he was in pretty bad shape at that point. Atlanta in good shape. Here's the snap draw to Rozier. The Steelers read it, but Rozier's second effort gets him about four yards. A direct snap. Rozier did that several times against the Bengals last Sunday night. And those are the kind of plays you expect to see in this kind of football game. Greg Lloyd was down on the ground. Mike Rozier was going to try to help him up. He waved him off. He says, get out of here. Falcons line it up without a huddle. Four wide out set here from the red gun. Miller wants to go left. Scans the field. And now he's going to head for the sideline and get as much as he can. He got a first down and got out of bounds with 14 seconds left. Greg Lloyd ran him out. Greg Lloyd avoided uh, Freilich downfield, but uh, Greg Vesey didn't uh, saw Freilich turn around and get a nice little slam block on Vesey that time. Now uh, you can hear Chuck Noll down on the sideline discussing things with the officials. He's upset about the way things are going right now. At this point, it would be about a 44-yard field goal attempt by Davis, so the Falcons would like to get him a little more room. They might go up on top one more time and try to get six. 14 seconds left till halftime. Dwayne Woodruff just break back on the ball perfectly. Chris Miller was trying to get back to his receiver who was on a comeback. And Woodruff does a nice bit of running here, but uh, Floyd Dixon's got outstanding speed along with Chris Miller who gets in on the tackle. So that's the way the half ends. One As of the things you don't try to do, Brad, is fool the old veterans. Dwayne Woodruff has been around a long time, just jumped all over the ball and took it down there. And the Atlanta defense pitching a shutout at this point. Falcons on three Greg Davis field goals with a 9-0 lead. And when you look at that 9-0 lead, you got enough of the, the Steelers defense is doing a pretty good job, too, coming into this game. And one of the best uh, rated, uh, top-rated defenses in the, in the National Football League. So both defenses have been doing a pretty good job today. They've given the Falcons some yardage all day long, but they've come up with big plays just when they needed them. A big play like this one. Oh, 
Kessler and Dan Jiggett's back with you, but Dan, you can't score if you don't have the football. That's exactly it. And everybody thought that the Steelers offensively had everything out of the way and cleared up after the Monday night win against the Rams, but it's apparent that they've been having some problems today with time of possession. And you can see Atlanta's had the ball over twice as much as the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers have in terms of time of possession, and that's reflected in the other numbers uh, when you look at the passing game uh, that uh, they have been able to get into. Uh, that is Atlanta. Anderson's first opportunity to kick goes into the end zone, a touchback. And not only the total offense, basically twice as much for Atlanta, but the quarterback situation, it's the same deal. Uh, Bobby Brister hasn't had the ball, so his stats aren't going to be great. Chris Miller's not overly flashy, but pretty effective. Pretty effective, except for that one last interception that I'm sure he would love to have back at Abbott right before the half. And, uh, and uh, what... What they lost in that situation, Atlanta, that is, is that they lost an opportunity to kick another field goal and be up in this game 12-0. And they would have loved to have had a 44-yard field goal attempt before the half instead of the interception by Dwayne Woodruff, his 37th of his career, by the way. Chris Miller in the Atlanta offense from its own 20-yard line. Broussard and Johnson in an eye set. And this is the rookie, Steve Broussard. Darnell Lake. And David Johnson in on the hit. Johnson has a sprained left knee. We didn't even think he'd be back, but he is in there and helped out on the tackle. He's a pretty good cornerback. You know, everybody uh, tries to avoid going to, to Rod Woodson's side, but it's no bargain coming over to that other side with Johnson. The other injury so far on the defensive side for the Steelers, Keith Willis, a sprained ankle, and he will not return, we understand. Only about a yard gain for Broussard. Second and nine. Miller. The safety, safety valve is Broussard. And he saw Greg Lloyd coming Look, out of the corner of his eye. Greg was releasing the safety valve. The air was coming out of that one quick. Steve Broussard took a look up. And it's a good thing he didn't catch it for the Falcons because he'd have probably lost about three or four on the play. Number 79, Bill Fralick coming home to Pittsburgh where he was on league champions with Penn Hills High. Even his junior high team won <laughs> its championship with the big fella. And then on as a three-time All-American at the University of Pittsburgh. Had his jersey retired, his locker retired, everything there. Now sells insurance in the offseason. He says he sells it to truckers, though, so he keeps that it fits. alive. Yeah. <laughs> From the red gun, Chris Miller, I think, is going to take a timeout. So Miller will talk it over with Jerry Glanville. And a third and eight awaits him when we come back. Fifty-four seconds into the second half, and Chris Miller decides to call a timeout. Now, what he's looking at is a, a four-man front for the Steelers, and he just felt that he didn't have the right play on, apparently, and called a timeout, but he wasted a timeout early in the second half. Boy, waste is right. Less than a minute into the third quarter. Third down and eight. Atlanta. Basically the same look we had before the timeout. And Ryzen makes the diving catch. And a first down Atlanta. Right in front of Rod Woodson. He said, uh, Andre told us that he'd been running into so much double coverage over the last couple of weeks. He said, now, when you get open, you want the pill. You want the ball in your hands. Here he just uh, abuses Carnell Lake. Nice uh, out of the break there. Slides down and makes a nice reception. He's seen so much double coverage over the last two or three weeks, and he considers that an honor and uh, works to beat it. And there is uh, Bill Freilich up there on that offensive line. That time he tried to go low to get the cut block, but uh, the defensive lineman didn't push all the way across. Miller to Ryzen got the Falcons 10 on a first down. Roussard lost the football. I think Atlanta covered it. That one really popped in the air. Big hit on Broussard. Hardy Nickerson put the hat on him. And Pittsburgh could certainly use the turnover. Atlanta's capitalized on the Pittsburgh uh, fumbles. Yeah, one of the things is you get an experienced offensive line like the Falcons have now. Mike Kennan's over there. He's been over there about 14 years now. Maybe giving him one more than he deserves. <laughs> but uh, Jamie Dukes down at the center position. We mentioned Houston Hoover before. Freilich and uh, Hinton. That's a good offensive line to run behind. If you want to grind up some clock, you can do it behind those tractors. Second down, a long seven. Again, the Atlanta Red Gun. Here comes a blitz. James Milling. Nice move inside. 
Johnson makes the tackle, but Millings got the first down of the 48. Brad, you see how the Pittsburgh defense is always giving Atlanta the upfront stuff. We said they're going to let them work underneath. Dave Brazil told me, the uh, defensive coordinator from the Steelers, said, hey, look, we're going to give you that stuff because we feel if we bat 50%, we're doing our job because 10% uh, of that 50% are going to be passes that are incomplete, so we can keep you at 40% completion. Then we know we're doing our job, but we're not going to give you the big play. We're going to let you throw that stuff up underneath and try to let you make some mistakes, and maybe we can get a pick. That's what they did right before halftime with the interception by Woodruff. Atlanta, though, has moved it out to its own 49. Dixon in motion. Falcons in the red gun. Miller to Milling again. And another first down. James Milling's in for Michael Haynes, who has been deactivated for this game with a broken bone in his hand. And Milling is not one of the main players in the Atlanta offense, but he's a good one, and he got 14 more there. And keep in mind, he's working against Johnson over that side, who, uh, as we mentioned earlier, has a knee problem, a strained knee. And he may not be uh, completely 100%, so maybe we'll see a little bit more of Dwayne Woodruff out there as well. I see Woodruff is in the game now in their nickel situation. So the Falcons, who had the football twice as much in the first half as did the Steelers have had it the entire third quarter and have moved it to the Pittsburgh 37 yard line. Again four wide outs for Atlanta. And there's the direct snap to Rozier again to the 33 yard line he picked up about five. Now the story on that direct snap is that the quarterback can only have one hand up when he goes back because if he has two up it's a penalty. So what you're going to have to see Chris Miller do is he's going to have to have one hand up when he goes back to fake and when the ball is directly snapped to Rozier. Look at that surprise going on. Mm. Dallas and the Jets. Jets had a punt return for a touchdown of 98 yards. Terrence Mathis, which tied an NFL record for their score. Here it is 9-0. The Atlanta Falcons lead the Pittsburgh Steelers and a second down and six upcoming. Rozier Looks to have a first down as he cuts back inside. Dwayne Woodruff in on the tackle. To get back to that direct snap, the story was that when Jerry Glanville first ran that play in Houston, he said that the, they, you know, the officials wanted to penalize him after it was right at the half when he ran the play. He said they wanted to penalize him. He said, no, the, the, the snap was just to the wrong guy, and the quarterback <laughs> was trying to reach in, and he was trying to get the ball. Rozier had 50 of his 73 yards against Cincinnati last week out of that what they call a snap draw. And he's made it work again today. First down Falcons. Ten minute mark to go third quarter. Miller incomplete. That one intended for Floyd Dixon, and again, it was Woodruff on the coverage. The key there for Chris Miller, though, is you see the protection that he's getting on the perimeter. His offensive tackles are doing a great job. He's taking that nice short set, and that's allowing him to set up and give him that pocket of protection. And as a result, he's got enough time to step up in the pocket, look around, and make his second and third reads. Look at that protection outside so he can just walk up in there, step up one step, and fire the football. Jerry Glanville says he's never been around a quarterback that has better field vision than Chris Miller in only his fourth year out of Oregon. And there's his numbers on the day. Second and ten. Rozier behind Jamie Dukes and company again. And it'll bring up a third down situation and a long five. Glanville says uh, having Rozier in that backfield is like having another coach who comes out on the field. When you tell somebody how to do it, he shows the other running backs how to do it. Not a bad day for Mike Rozier, who's played here before with yeah. the Pittsburgh Maulers. I was joking with him. I said, there's still a Mauler sign out there. He goes, really? He works with that? <laughs> Joe Green, one that. of six players from the Steelers Super Bowl years to be in the Hall of Fame. He knows a few things about Maul and people here at Blue River Stadium, too. Sixth time the Falcons have ventured inside the Pittsburgh 30. Third and five. Almost picked off by Carnell Lake. And again, Atlanta's going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. Carnell Lake is starting to break on the ball a little bit better now. Watch him off the break on this one. Andre Risen trying to get past him. He releases Andre right there. Whoa. We see him break right <laughs> off of it. That's the key, though. He's, he's breaking off tight now. But now what Andre Rise is probably going to do is go back and say, hey, now I have the out and up. Got a little piece of jersey stuck in his hand, too, there. <laughs> Davis is three out of four today. This one 
from 40 yards out. Kick on its way. This one also goes to the right on it. Second time going this way that Davis has let one tail off to the right side. Still Atlanta with a lead, but Pittsburgh maybe with new life. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets back at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, where it is still 9-0 as Greg Davis missed another field goal. And you see the flags at the top of the goalpost, and we thought maybe the wind was blowing, but that's about the way they were when he kicked, attempted to kick this field goal, and he just simply pushed it off to the right. It's like your golf swing. Huh? Worse, <laughs> if that's possible. Play action for Brister on first down. Wants it all. Derrick Hill's up there. but he got 59 yards. Ryan Jordan got him from behind. That caused the injury, but the Steelers have their biggest offensive play of the day. Play action is what did it now as Derrick Hill goes downfield. Let's uh, see where Jordan lays up on that leg. Made a nice reception out there. Jordan's chasing him and just dives out and stretches out. And right there, it looked like that ankle twisted and buckled under just a little bit. But Bubby Brissett said, hey, I rolled seven that time. Brister, who complained about the Pittsburgh offense, that he couldn't throw the ball downfield. That's when things were going badly at one and three. And since they've gone three and one the last month, some of that long ball stuff has opened up for Brister, as it did there. The longest reception of Derrick Hill's career, and he had to pay the price for it, is he's injured on the play, and they're going to help him off. Second-year pro out of Arizona has put the Steelers at the Atlanta 11-yard line, their deepest penetration of the day. And they say, if you don't know how good Derrick Hill is, just talk to him. He'll tell you. <laughs> he can go down and get it, though. Here's another look at it. Now watch the play action effect there. You see, Deion Sanders was even up on the line of scrimmage, and he's a cornerback, but that play action was very effective. That allowed Derrick Hill to get down there behind uh, the safeties, Scott Case and Jordan. That means Dwight Stone will play more. He's in motion as the give goes to Hodge. No gain on that play as Jesse Tuggle makes a nice tackle in the backfield. Tuggle leading the NFL in tackles. You know, it's interesting when we were talking to Merle Hodge, it's very much like Jesse Tuggle in terms of the work ethic thing. He said when uh, last year when he came in, he had 12 goals. He had them all up on the board in his house, and he realized he wasn't going to reach any of them. He said he had to reset things and just said, I want to be the best that I can be on every play. And, and took that attitude the rest of the season. Of course, last year in the playoffs, he just had a, a wonderful postseason and has picked it up and carried it another step so far this season. His biggest game against Denver last year in the loss. You saw the numbers on the Pittsburgh offense inside the 20. They have it second down at the Atlanta 11. Play fake. Lewis looks. is limping as well in the sideline. Anderson's point after is good. Lewis Slips said that he wanted to test the secondary of the Atlanta Falcons, find out who's best. Bobby Brister gets good protection there. Lewis Lips runs an excellent slant route in there and just simply beats his man, and that's Deion Sanders. And that time he didn't have to worry about turning him. Excuse me, that's uh, Charles Demery. Second touchdown reception of the year for Lewis Lips, and it's 9-7. They call him the Rocket. Raheem Ismail turbocharges the second-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame as they collide with 11th-ranked Tennessee next Saturday on CBS Sports. Bobby Brister's 12th touchdown pass of the year, a career high, has Pittsburgh right back in the football game. Deion Sanders from the two. Really took
took a shot at the 25. And it's Tyrone Stone. And the Steeler crowd, which had nothing to cheer, but Dwayne Woodruff's interception and a couple of missed field goals are into it now. And Tyrone Stone. Special teams player with a very special haircut. He got one of those Bart Simpsons. Check it out. See, he, he knew I was going to talk about it. See that? There it is. He's no underachiever. That haircut's as scary as that lick he just put on Sanders. <laughs> Atlanta from their own 26. Sean Collins drives Woodson near the first down sticks. Let's try to pick up the sound of the impact on Deion Sanders and Tyrone Stowe. So you want to run back kickoffs. <laughs> How much do they pay those guys? <laughs> Deion says, I'm all right. Sean Collins down on the far side of the field after that reception. There have been some hard hits in this football game. Several players have left and not come back. Look at this over this. I see, yeah, I had my helmet right here, and then I hit him like just like that. Deion says, no sweat. Second down on a yard. Atlanta at its own 35. Rozier. The first down or not? I don't think so. Craig Vesey made the first hit. Let's see where they spot this one. Start thinking back now to all the missed opportunities that the Falcons had to put seven points on the board, had to settle for field goals in some case, missed them. Now the situation is getting kind of critical. They're ahead by two. Remember, two missed field goals. One of 42 and one of 40 by Greg Davis. Atlanta would love to have those six points right now. You can bet. Third and short. This time, Rozier appears to have it. And Johnny Greer, our referee, says first down Atlanta. And that quiets the crowd momentarily. And Jerry Glanville has said there are two great crowds to play against in the National Football League. One's in Cleveland. And one's in Three River Stadium. He loves the booze. Yeah, so this kind of crowd, you can't get excited about this one. You got a problem. Bill said, I can't wait to take the field. He said, they'll be throwing dead snakes at me and everything from the stands. Some of them live. <laughs> Some of them live. That's a whole other story. <laughs> his, his Falcons have a first down at their own 37-yard line. James Milling has been able to find some room underneath on that side of the Pittsburgh defense and he's got some good yardage. Let's go to New York and get another update from Greg Gumbel. All right, Brad, at the Silver Dome, just don't get in the way of the Detroit Lions today. Watch Barry Sanders straight up the middle and then pure speed to the end zone, 45 yards. It's a 35 to 14 Lions lead over the Redskins in the third quarter. Brad? All right, Greg, looked like a couple of guys had the angle, but he makes <laughs> angles disappear, doesn't he? You have to be a, a major in geometry to figure out the angles <laughs> for Barry Sanders. Chris Miller, 160 yards in the air. No touchdown passes. He's thrown an interception. His Falcons have second down and four. Steve Broussard. And Broussard's going to be close to another Falcon first down. Next week, college football here on CBS. Notre Dame probably will be number one tomorrow morning when the polls come out against Tennessee. Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa get it going with a college football today. Two o'clock Eastern time next Saturday right here on CBS. That'll be a good one. The Vols and the Fighting Irish. And of course, Notre Dame will be number one because of what Georgia Tech did. And they celebrated in Atlanta. I found out this morning they ripped down the goalposts at Grant Field. Took them down Fraternity Row and burnt them last night back in Atlanta after the Yellow Jackets win over Virginia. First down, Falcons. Be a big weekend for Atlanta fans if Tech could win and the Falcons could too. Chris Miller. Milling's out there and so is Woodson. the all-pro with 
the second interception of Chris Miller. Right side of your screen. That's what we're talking about Rod Woodson at the beginning of the game and how he may be one of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League. And one of the reasons why is because it's so difficult to run away from him. And he's got that good eye. A lot of defensive backs don't understand how to catch the football. Rod Woodson does. Woodson's third interception of the season gives the ball back to the Steeler offense at its own 16-yard line. Hodge may lose a yard. Radian Green there to meet him. Well, in the first half, the Atlanta Falcons turned two fumbles by the Steelers into field goals and had a 6-0 lead. And then Dwayne Woodruff prevented them from getting any more points at halftime. And now here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh with three minutes and ten seconds to go third quarter. It's been the Steeler defense with the swipe by Woodson and, of course, a touchdown pass also from Brister to Lips. And, and now we got a tight game. Yeah, and the other part of the story may be missed opportunities as the song goes because uh, they missed two field goal opportunities from in close. Greg Davis did. And that could really have uh, Atlanta ahead in this game comfortably. Eric Green, the big tight end, in motion to the far side. Gets the ball from Brister and lost it. Didn't have it at all. Looked like a reception, but he didn't quite control it. Charles Dimry over there to put a hit on him. Incomplete. It'll be third and 11. Folks, Eric Green may reestablish what tight ends can be and, and what they can do in the National Football League. At 6'5", 280 pounds, he has a great deal of ability. People say he's just awesome, formidable. And, uh, Brad, when we talked to him, you have the feeling that he may be able to put on another 15 pounds or so because uh, he's got a big frame. He ought to have his own garage door opener. That's the size of this guy. <laughs> Third and 11. Brister on the run to Bell. Three yards, first down. Richard Bell kept his eye on the ball this time, and he knew Scott Case was closing in. And you'll see Scott Case, 25, closing in from his safety position after Bell makes a, the reception. But he heard Case coming out of the corner of his eye. He saw him and then just made the reception, kept his concentration on it, took the shot. Almost 100 of Brister's passing yards today have come on two plays. One to Hill, that one to Bell. First down, Steelers at the Atlanta 42. Even a field goal for the Steelers, and they have the lead. Brister throws this one almost to the first row of the crowd over here by the Pirates' dugout. I think our cameraman had a shot at it. <laughs> Rick Strom, you see Rick Strom is signaling in. He's number 11. He's signaling in the formation. Now, the other player come in, Stone there, will, will bring in the play itself. So now Bubby's checking back again. Is that the formation and the motion that you want? He says that's what's been the key to the turnaround in the past month. When I know the formation before I get the play in the huddle, everything seems to make sense. Out of the flat, it's Williams. Rady and Tuggle will run him down after a short game. Under two minutes to go third quarter. It is 9-7, Atlanta with the lead here, as you see some of the other scores from around the league. And three yards, third down, seven. Is that Detroit, Washington story again? A big surprise. The Jets out in front of Dallas by four. Philadelphia getting back in that win column quite possibly against New England. Third down for the Steelers and seven at the Atlanta 39. From the shotgun, Lewis Lips in motion. Brister. Pumps and then got hammered. Jesse Tuggle again. Bobby Brister gets up swinging at everybody, including one of the officials. He should have avoided Jesse Tuggle, I can tell you that much. It's kind of tough to do that, though. Jesse's in on an awful lot of stops. He was in on 24 tackles against Cincinnati and leading the NFL with over 100. Straczynski. Kind of a lazy punt. Deion Sanders takes the fair catch near the 16-yard line. So the Atlanta offense has it back there 
with 55 seconds to go third quarter. Atlanta leading 9-7. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and this CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the National Football League is prohibited. With Dan Jiggetts, I'm Brad Nessler. Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, where Chris Miller and the Atlanta offense set to take over under a minute to play third quarter. Now the pressure is thrown back on Chris Miller and his offense's shoulders because they've got to get out and produce some, some points now and try to open this thing up for their, their team. They've had the ball over nine minutes of this quarter, too, and no points to show for it. Nowhere to go for Rozier, that's for sure. Craig Vesey makes the big hit for Pittsburgh. Next week... Doubleheader week on CBS. These same Falcons against the Chicago Bears and the Giants and the Rams in the second game. And the Rams have got to get something going in a hurry. It'll be too little too late. Greg and Terry and Leslie and Pat will get it underway at 12.30 next Sunday right here on CBS. Second down, 11 for the Falcons. They'll have to open it up pretty soon. Wilkins can't make the catch at the 32. He stretched out for it, couldn't quite hold up. Hardy Nickerson was back there covering. And Hardy Nickerson is still talking to, to Wilkins. But Chris Miller did a nice job of avoiding the rush. Uh, he got out of the pocket, got flushed a little bit. You'll see him run over to his right. A little bit of a roll there now. The rush from Bessie, he just uh, takes one step. See you later. Steps up and delivers the football. That's the good news. He avoided the rush. The bad news is it's third and 11. The Atlanta red gun. Four wide outs for Miller. Got it to Sean Collins and a first down out near the Pittsburgh, out near the Atlanta 30 yard line, I should say. And that brings the third quarter to a close. At the end of three, it's Atlanta 9 and Pittsburgh 7. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. KDK TV Sports. You've got the best seat in the house. Set to start the fourth quarter. Jimmy Robinson and Ray Sherman and the rest of the Falcons coaching staff in the booth down from us. And what are they talking about to get things going here in the fourth, Dan? Well, I'm sure they're telling uh, Jerry Glanville, you know, we have to become a little bit more aggressive in the, the passing area, go downfield. And Chris Miller there is trying to tell Sean Collins, hey, look, now's the time you got to suck it up. I know you're hurting a little bit, but uh, now's the time we got to win this football game. Falcons have had the ball almost 31 minutes in this game. Miller got away from Lloyd once, but not the second time. He avoided him once, but not back at the 16-yard line. Lower right-hand party of screen number 95. Now he's in the middle. The guy who said he wants to lead the league in knockouts. That's a strange statistic, but Jerry Glanville <laughs> loved it. And he gets Chris Miller and just body slams. Ouch. Chris couldn't. Second down and 17. Make it second and 25. Miller in trouble again. Now going deep for Collins. And it's picked up. Larry Griffin. see the triple coverage that he ended up throwing into. Now watch it here around the 30-yard line marker. That's where the coverage is going to start collapsing on his receiver. Now you see right here, watch this. There'll be one guy, two, and this guy's going to close in as well. And that's what Chris Miller really threw into. And Griffin comes across and makes a nice interception on the play. Double coverage, triple coverage now on the deep man. 
It's been a story of turnovers. Atlanta turned the first two Pittsburgh fumbles into points, and the Steelers try to repay the favor. Brister to Lips. And that's not booze, those are Lou's. Lewis Lips, former rookie of the year, and his seventh season now to Southern Mississippi. Lewis Lips says, introducing a cookie next in the next couple of weeks is going to, calling it Lip Smackers. <laughs> and he says it's going to help charities raise money and help community groups with it. There's a story of the turnovers on the day. Three interceptions. There's a community group that just helped themselves. Lips and Stone both out there together, and they run it back the other way with Warren Williams. Scott Case hit Williams lower. He may have been off to the races. First down, Steelers. Get behind those big uh, Pittsburgh offensive guards. I shouldn't say big. I should say hefty because they're all about six feet tall. But Terry Long comes out, throws his block outside. Brian Blankenship, number 60, gets his man down and allows Williams to squeeze it out upfield. Blankenship's about 6'1". Terry Long right there is the shortest lineman in the NFL at 5'11". I was going to say six. You know, I give him another inch. <laughs> First down, Steelers at the Atlanta 22. Here's Williams. Up the middle this time, Tuggle and Gann and about nine other Falcons are there. And that's what Jerry Glanville teaches, is to get as many people around the ball carrier as possible. And there's a little talking going on down there, too. This is a surprising score. Green Bay still out in front of San Francisco. The wall is still leading Cincinnati, and that has big implications for the Steelers, Brad. It sure does. If the Steelers can come back and win this, and should New Orleans hold on, that would mean there'd be a deadlock atop the AFC Central between these two clubs. The wall just inside the Atlanta 20 for the Steelers. Second down and eight. Two tight ends. Play fake by Brister and one of those tight ends is Malarkey. Touchdown. Brister's second scoring toss of the day. Anderson with a point after. Watch the action here. Play action away. Merle Hodge does a nice job of faking the football. And Mike Malarkey just dipped in, came back on out there on the naked bootleg, and he makes the reception for the touchdown. He just powered the football in the end zone. This game summary is sponsored by Levi's 505, 506, and 540 jeans. For the first time today, the Steelers lead 14-9. Bobby Brister's been on fire this half alone, 151 yards and two touchdowns in that 204 total. Chris Miller has cooled off with the three interceptions. And Deion Sanders takes over on the kick return. And look out for Dion. He got across the 30 to about the 31-yard line where Tyrone Stowe made the stop again. Let's take a look at that last touchdown, Brad. You want to see the effect of play action. Watch the linebackers. Malarkey's going to come across in motion and then dip out and make the reception. And Jesse Tuggle, number 58, really bit on it. Real tough. Now watch. Malarkey goes across in motion. Everybody sweeps down. Now watch Tuggle and the other inside linebackers bite on the play. Malarkey breaks back outside. He is wide open on the play. And the touchdown capped a 36-yard drive and four plays. And both Steeler touchdowns have come after Atlanta turnovers. The Falcons now knowing that they need a touchdown to win this football game. They've been unable to get one yet. Rozier inside, out near the 35. Hinkle is there to make the stop for Pittsburgh. You know, it seems in this game that, you know, the Falcons have done what they needed to do to get down the field, but they have not played with a sense of urgency when they get into scoring position. It's almost like they expect to have a lot of opportunities, 
and if you're playing against a defense like the Steelers, those opportunities are going to be few and far between, so you really have to take full advantage of them when you get them. And we're down to the 11.45 mark remaining in the game. Steelers leading Atlanta 14-9. Falcons will work from the red gun offense with four wide receivers for Chris Miller. Incomplete. Intended for Milling. Cincinnati is trailing New Orleans by another touchdown with 10 minutes left. And if New Orleans wins that, and the Steelers could win this game, they'd both be 5-4. and four. And What a turnaround that would be for the Steelers from the beginning of the season. People were writing them off for dead again, and uh, I guess they put them on the resuscitator and got it working. They've won three of their last four. The Falcons have won three times this year, more than all as many times as all of last year. But they've been unable to win on the road. And now it's getting tough again. Third down for Chris Miller in the Atlanta offense. Incomplete. Dixon was open. And Miller threw it behind him. I think we have a holding call on top of it against the Atlanta offense. Fifty-seven thousand plus enjoying what they're seeing now, and Scott Fulhag in for his first punt of the day. First, it was the Atlanta offense that prevented the punch. The last three times, it's been interceptions. And Rod Woodson back deep for Pittsburgh. You don't want to give Woodson much room either. Fields it at the fifteen. The Steelers with a lead and the ball at the Atlanta 46-yard line, thanks to a brilliant punt return by Rod Woodson. Warren Williams. Tim Green from the backside, and the ball's loose again. And Atlanta has covered it, I believe. Falcons football. What a turnaround, as the Steelers had a 14-9 lead and had things going entirely their way, and Robert Lyles has just turned that around. Well, what it does is it really breaks the back of your defense because they've done a good job getting you the football back, and now you roll it down on the, on the AstroTurf right after, you know, the first play after you, you got back on the field. And Robert Lyles has jumped all over that one. So the Falcons with 10.52 to go in the game. Will work from the 43, maybe. They're going to take a look at all this upstairs now. Replay booth will have a peek to see if indeed that was a fumble. Well, it was tough from our, our perspective on that uh, replay to tell whether or not it was a knee down or contact by the ground or anything else. I don't know if they've got a... This look is not nearly as conclusive, but maybe you can get some idea of uh, what may have happened there in the play. There the ball pops out clearly. Jesse Tuggle sticks the shoulder in it. The ball pops out on the ground. Once again, look for Tuggle. 58. Green makes the stop. Tuggle comes in and finishes it off and uh, gets the football to drop. We'll see if Al Sabato sees it the way we do. We got it, Al. We told him already. <laughs> Save your energy, Al. <laughs> After further review, the play stands. Pittsburgh fumble, first down Atlanta. The last two times the Steelers fumbled, the Falcons were able to turn them into points, but both were field goals. They need a touchdown now. Chris Miller, 175 yards passing, but he's been intercepted three times, and he's missed five of his last six throws. The blitz coming. Andre Risen inside the Pittsburgh 40 to the 39 where Larry Griffin finally got him down 
Fred, one of the things that the Steelers have been able to do all season long is dominate in the fourth quarter. It's almost like they capture it. Uh, and as you can see by the numbers there, 56 points for them, and their opponent's only 31. By the same token, the, the Falcons always had a problem in the second quarter uh, in trying to get points on the board. Falcons have had trouble getting points on the board other than field goals all day so far. Three Greg Davis field goals, two that he missed. They'd love to have that extra six points, but that's not the case. Dixon in motion. First down Atlanta. Here's a give inside to Broussard. A little quick draw. And he got a couple out of it. Donald Evans in on the stop. 49ers have now tied it up with the Packers. New Orleans still leads Cincinnati. And the Raiders in Kansas City. That game has gotten a little bit closer. That is a big one in the AFC West, obviously. Phoenix may have used up all their gas on the Bears last week, and Detroit's still leading the Redskins. Detroit, in fact, has tacked three more on. Second down and eight. Chris Miller exclusively now from the Red Gun shotgun offense. Broussard by himself in the flat. And the Steelers didn't give him much. Somebody's headset on the sideline just flew about 20 yards. Yeah, I think it was, uh, it may have been Joe Green's. That's the case. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Did I run into your headset? <laughs> we'll get that thing put together for Joe. Yeah. I remember he used to throw jerseys in that commercial. <laughs> now he's going to do a new one for headsets. Here is the biggest third down of the day for the Atlanta Falcons. At the Pittsburgh 35. Here comes the crowd. And here comes the blitz. Tipped at the line. May have been Jarrell Williams. Incomplete. Decision time for Atlanta. Jarrell Williams is uh, six foot five and get that hand up in there and got elevated a little bit just enough to, to pop the ball down. Watch him over the left side of your screen. You see his hand come up right there. He gets up in the air and just slams that ball. Fourth down and seven and the Falcons are forced to go for it. again that time it may have been Donald Evans and the steel curtain the new steel curtain just closed on Chris Miller 14 9 Steelers Donald Evans, one of 16 children and one of three sets of twins in the Evans family. Probably had to raise his hand just to ask a question when he was a kid, and he got a big one here. And this is what happened on play. You saw the pick play right there. Sean Collins and Andre Risen both open, but the ball was tipped by Evans. Now, he would rush the pass from Mike Ken, but Mike had him in pretty good shape. But right here, he jumps up. Now, keep in mind, Evans is only 6'2", jumped up and blocked that ball. And the Steelers hold on fourth down and take over offensively. Merrill Hodge out near the 40. Got about four. We approach the eight and a half minute mark in this one. Don't forget next week, doubleheader CBS. We start things off with the Falcons and the Bears and the Giants and the Rams. And everything gets underway with Greg and Terry and the gang and the NFL today at 1230 Eastern. That's next Sunday right here on CBS Sports. 14 to 9 Steelers on two Bobby Brister touchdown passes as we approach the eight minute mark to go. Atlanta needs another turnover now because their offense has not produced a score, a touchdown, I should say, so far today. Lewis lips in motion. Kind of a statue of liberty to stone and he lost the ball. And that almost was the turnover we talked about. Big loss on the play for the Steelers. 
Rick Bryan, I think number 77, is the guy that makes the play. He's up on the top of your screen now. Gets good penetration in. Now watch him just strip the ball from Stone right there. Knocks it out, and Dwight realizes that the ball is gone. Hey, I better get back on it. Rick Bryan in his seventh year out of Oklahoma. Lyles had a shot at the ball uh, when it was on the carpet. Squirts all the way back to the 24-yard line where it is third down and about 21 to go. There's Rick Bryan who forced that fumble. And now the Steelers go with a shotgun. Well, they keep it on the ground. Draw play to Hodge. Got it out near the 33. And the Steelers will have to punt it back to Atlanta with seven minutes to go in the game. Now this is the point on the field where unless Straczynski again can get that tremendous hang time, you would think maybe Deion Sanders would have a chance at a return. So far today, he's been shut out. But the, the Steelers will tell you they will give up the distance on the punts to make sure that they get the kind of coverage they need to make sure Deion doesn't get an opportunity to run it back. That's true. Straczynski came into this game only averaging under 39 a kick, but he kicks him a mile in the air, and he did again. And again, a fair catch is all Deion Sanders can do at the 25, and that one up five seconds one more time. 43-yard punt, and no room for prime time at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, where the Falcons took control. They have controlled the clock and the football, but the Steelers, with a couple of Bubby Brister touchdown passes in the second half, lead it now 14-9. Well, you talk to the Steelers about what you feel they need to do to become a successful team and to continue winning. And they said that they have to develop the confidence in what they're doing and then stick with it. A lot of people said, hey, maybe you ought to get away from the offense that Joe Walton has brought in here and try something different. And uh, Chuck Noll said, no way. We're going to stay with this thing and make it work. you got to believe in it, though. Atlanta now, you would assume, will go almost exclusively with their red gun package. They go short on the screen to Broussard. And he's got a first down out across the 35 near the 39 yard line where David Johnson and Carnell Lake finally got him down. But the rookie number one draft choice has a 12 yard pickup. These are those times when you get to in a football game that's just a little over six minutes left. And this is gut check time now for both of these clubs. If the Steeler defense can stop the Atlanta Falcons from marching down the field and getting a touchdown and have the Falcons matured enough and grown enough uh, as an offense to take advantage of the opportunities they've given them now and push the ball into the end zone. Keep in mind, a field goal does Atlanta no good. They need a touchdown. Miller goes left to Collins. Nice move to get around the first man and the first down into Pittsburgh territory at the 49-yard line. San Francisco 49ers are meeting the Green Bay Packers. They end Green Bay, and the 49ers have come from behind and now lead 17 to 10. And of course, they are undefeated on the season at 7 and 0. Atlanta trails them at 3 and 4. New Orleans trying to win their third. And who would ever thought that the Rams would end up in third place in that division, rather? Sean Collins. Place. <laughs> Sean Collins just picked up his fourth catch of the day. Good for 12 yards and a first down in Pittsburgh territory. Stopping the clock with 5.18 to go. Chris Miller in trouble. Throws short to Rozier. With a convoy in front. And Rozier picks his way down inside the Pittsburgh 30 to the 29-yard line. Right, you know, on, on a screen play, it's almost as important to, for the receivers to sell the screen as it is for the offensive line. Now, see, they just let everybody slide by them. Now that offensive line is out front, convoy, three guys up there to block. There's one block. Hinkle goes down. Now you got uh, Mike Ken out front. He's looking for a guy, picks out uh, Rod Woodson and rolls over him, and that allowed Mike Rosier to get down there in pretty good uh, shape. I would think Atlanta offensively now is thinking we want to go 29 yards in four minutes and 25 yeah. seconds. <laughs> Again, the four wide outlook for Chris Miller, who's warmed back up after the interception troubles. Overshot Broussard. Broussard was trying to wait for Jamie Dukes to get in front, and that one just never materialized as it was supposed to. Oh, what a nice little pump fake there. He pump faked and then came back with it the second time. Boy, Atlanta's been piling up the yardage until they hit the Pittsburgh 30, and then that's where the curtain has closed so far today. Only nine points to show for it. They missed two field goals that were from very makeable range, if you will, 40 and 43, uh, 40 and 42. 
Jerry Glanville, that guy, he's got a buckle on there, a belt buckle that has the Atlanta Falcons 25th anniversary insignia, and I think he's got to weigh about 10 pounds. Second and 10, Atlanta. Blitz coming. Falcons pick it up. What a hit. Milling made the catch and then got leveled by Johnson. But tell Milling you, held on. I tell you, when you make that kind of catch, you don't even feel the hit. You, you feel that you're in the zone then. And somebody can get a good stick on you, but you don't realize until uh, Monday morning. Top right of your screen, that's Milling, number 84, all the way at the top. And he is going to make the reception on this play with a little dig inside. Again, everybody pushing off. He comes up underneath and makes the reception. His sixth catch of the day, filling in for an injured Michael Haynes. Third down Atlanta and a long three. Direct snap to Rozier. He doesn't get the first down. Ball came loose. But he was down at the 21. He's about two yards shy, I think. That time, the snap by Jamie Duke's a little bit off. And I think uh, Pittsburgh is also getting very used to this play. I saw him working at it uh, in practice on Friday. They were just, they ran it about eight times to make sure that they would make the proper reads on it. And it's apparent that they figured that one out. But Jamie Duke, they might give the ball to the Steelers, Dan. And they're asking for a replay. But I thought they had blown things dead. I thought I saw one of the officials say that it was down to the 21. Maybe I didn't. Let's wait and see. We have an Atlanta fumble. First down, with the snap. Rozier takes it up inside. And when did the ball come out and when did the whistle blow? Brian Hinkle gets his hand in there. And from that angle, it's awful. You can see the ball is out now, but uh, it's tough to say when it really came. Maybe we can see it from this picture here. Look inside and see when that ball pops out and when he goes down to the ground. Of course, the other thing we don't, there's the ball out. He's not down on the ground. That is a fumble. That's a good call. Jerry Glanville obviously doesn't think so. Well, see, the only thing that could have been is, as you mentioned, Brad, was there a whistle? And maybe that's what they were arguing at this point. See, he's saying he's down. The play, the play seemed so dead at that point that there wasn't even a big scramble for the ball. Everybody just kind of in the pile. Fourth turnover for Atlanta today. First fumble. And, Brad, the one thing they can't tell on these replays is when the whistle blew. They right. used to try something with a whistle that would make a little mark on the video screens of the replay. After further review, the play stands. Gary Glanville's almost all the way out to the hash mark. It's Pittsburgh football. And now Atlanta is going to need a miracle to pull this one out. And Jerry's arguing that uh, Mike Rozier was down on the field, but uh, he was not down. The only question could have been whether or not the whistle had blown. And I'm sure when Jerry takes another look at the, the uh, films of this game, he's going to realize that Rozier wasn't on the ground. It's been a story of turnovers. And if the Steelers don't turn it over again, they might be on their way to their fifth win of the season. Hodge swarmed under at about the 23-yard line. Connor is there. So is Epps and Jordan from his safety spot. Jerry Glanville is out on the field again. 2.59 to go in the game. at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Jerry Glanville still pleading his case to Johnny Greer, the referee, and the head linesman there, too, and we get another look at the play in question. And again, you know, the fumble occurred right in here, and Jerry thought that, uh, you know, Mike Rozier had gone down, but he can't see the ball where the ball had popped out. It popped out to the opposite side of the field, away from Glanville's uh, field of vision. So, yeah, he would think, because all he saw was Mike Rozier's back to him. The 
Falcons have only one timeout remaining with 2.59 to go. Remember, they burned a timeout less than a minute into the third quarter when Chris Miller seemed a bit confused as to either his alignment or the defensive look he was getting from the Steelers. So they're down to one timeout. Second and seven. Long pitch on the sweep to Hodge. He would like to stay inbounds, but didn't. Merrill Hodge. Merrill was telling us about how he rehabbed his knee after he got hurt last year in the playoffs. He said that the, he went to the pool and started doing some pool therapy, swimming and that type of thing, kick boards, and now he got uh, some of his other teammates involved in it. And, Makes it that's a good way to rehabilitate yourself and keep the stress off of the uh, joints. Looks like he was swimming upstream that time. He, he sure did. Turn that corner. He'd like to swim once more for about a yard, but he's going to come out. And Foster and Williams are in there. Steelers one out of six on third down. If they get this one, they might have the game. you pay with everybody up close trying to prevent a one-yard gain turns into a 70-yard romp the longest run of Warren Williams career Anderson to try to make it 21 to 9 so much about the trap blocking of the Steelers. Watch here, Terry Long on the on the trap block. You know, every now and then a guy from the 82nd Airborne Division gets a chance to throw a block. He was in the 82nd. And for all of you guys over there in the 82nd Airborne Division, watch this block here by your guy, Terry Long. Just crushed his man. And Warren Williams says, see ya, 70 yards for the touchdown. You know, there's some guys on the sideline that were running faster than Warren down there. You see a couple of guys come in the frame right down there. <laughs> he has some company. There's his little dance on the sideline. He did it once in the end zone. And a third-year pro out of Miami. Got his biggest play of his career. Once again, Terry Long at six feet and about 270 pounds. Takes his man out of the picture. Good blocking all the way up front for the Steelers. And Warren Williams turns on the Jets. Barry Foster, the rookie running back, got the other key block. And that's all she wrote. And everybody here in Pittsburgh will tell you, Barry Foster made a little mistake a couple of weeks ago in missing a kickoff. But they said, hey, we're gonna, this kid's going to make some big plays for us. And he turned in a, a nice effort there as well. Steelers took 25 seconds to score. Three plays, 79 yards. And obviously the 70-yard run, the capper. See, that's the only thing offensive linemen have is throwing blocks and springing running backs and allowing your quarterback to kind of tie. You know, those are the kinds of things that really they cherish in their hearts, you know. They go back home and they dream about throwing blocks like that. Terry Long was in the special forces, and he's a special force up there on that line of scrimmage. Anderson to kick and how this game has swung since halftime. Line drive trying to keep it away from Deion Sanders. Tracy Johnson, the up man, takes it. And bounces his way across the 35. Tonight on CBS, Saddam Hussein's best kept atomic secret is a uranium mine hidden away inside a mountain. But you know 60 minutes, they can't keep a secret. They'll show it to you tonight. That's followed by murder, she wrote. And the CBS Sunday night movie, 83 Hours Till Dawn, starring Peter Strauss and Robert Urich. That's all tonight, right here on CBS. The man of the hour, the man of the last couple of minutes, Warren Williams. 
And the crowd starting to sing na 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 na, hey hey hey, kiss Jerry goodbye. I think are the words right now. Chris Miller, Milling can't hold on as Woodruff buries him. 2:28 to play. Atlanta trailing 21 to nine. Bobby Brister, who struggled so badly in the first half of the season and in the first half of this game. But it was real apparent when we talked to him the other day that he's really starting to have a lot of fun now. He's really enjoying himself. The smile is back on his face and got a little bit of that pop back in his step and things are falling into place for him. He said to the media this week, and they couldn't believe it, he said, you know, I'm starting to think like Joe Walton now. <laughs> and that scared everybody. <laughs> Including Bubby probably. Rozier on a screen. Lost it again. Pittsburgh again. This time it'll be Craig Vesey, the nose tackle. you can say about this game is the Falcons self-destructed. Uh, it's not so much what the Steelers did to them as what they did to themselves, and this is a clear example of it. This is the second time that uh, Mike Rozier has fumbled in this game, and it's just been those kinds of miscues that have caused the Falcons trouble all day long. Larry Griffin, who had an interception earlier, is the man who got his helmet right on the football. And VC, he's got the V in the back of his hair. He's got, they got some hairdos on this the Steelers team, I'm telling you. I was in that locker room the other day. I couldn't believe it. He scooped up the Falcons' fifth turnover. And now Hodge is high-stepping as the Steelers can sense it. And Atlanta may take its final timeout right here to stop the clock at 2.09, and then the two-minute warning will do it next time for them. Brad, at the top of the game, we talked about the adjustments that the Steelers had to make last year in the terms of the defense. Rod Russ bringing in a new defense. He leaves, and Dave Brazil takes over for him, who was here previous to that. And now, offensively, they've had to make the adjustments to Joe Walton, and they've had problems in the early part of the season. But, boy, they got things cooking last year and got to the playoffs two points away from the AFC Championship game. And this year, things are rolling again. Rob Woodson told us one thing. He said, hey, look, we got to get a streak of about four or five wins going here, and then we're going to be real dangerous. And, of course, they finish up the season with a nice schedule. Cincinnati a couple of times, and they've got some games in there that they can win and, and take this thing uh, all the way. We also said to Woodson, with eight games left, how many can you win? He looked at us and said, all of them. <laughs> and the Steelers starting to feel that way, as they did in the second half of 89. They started so badly, finished 9-7 and seven regular season. That was a tie for second in the Central Division. And then went on to a couple of playoff wins. Now, here's their upcoming schedule. That idle team is pretty tough. <laughs> then they've got Cincinnati, the Jets, Cincinnati again, and New England all the way. That takes you up to December 9th. But those are games that they're capable of capturing. Certainly, they know what to do with Cincinnati. At the Atlanta 44, second down. Merrill Hodge again. No gain this time. Falcons still scraping in there defensively. Epps and Rady and Jordan and Case all around the football. As we work our way down to the two-minute warning. And the Pittsburgh Steelers in command. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, where the Steelers sitting on a lead, 21-9. And Cincinnati has lost, we understand, while San Francisco ups their lead over Green Bay, which means they'll go to 8-0 in the NFC West. But the AFC Central will now have a deadlock between the Bengals and the Steelers atop the division at 5-4. New Orleans winning. Now we'll have three wins also there in the NFC West. Steelers third down here. Brister to throw to Hodge. First down, he wants to stay in bounds, but he's still going through the goal line. And a little post-play activity. The public address system here during the two-minute warning just played Midnight Train to Georgia. A little Gladys Knight in the pips. They know how to rub it in here, I'll tell you that much. There was a time when 
as head coach of the Oilers, Jerry Glanville was introduced here as Gary Grandview. And the fans have not forgotten that. There's another former Oiler who has won three times in a row on this field and will not today. Glanville's string of wins at Three Rivers over Chuck Knoll is about a minute and seven seconds from being kaput. Hodge straight ahead. Lyles brings him down. And uh, Brett, at this point in the game, one of the worst uh, Tunchilk and uh, uh, speedy recovery from the dislocated uh, elbow that he got on Friday in practice. Folks, it was just about the end of practice. I think they had about three plays left in practice, and he was pass protected and just got the elbow dislocated. And he's their Pro Bowl uh, right tackle, and uh, they missed him today, but uh, they were able to capture the win. Don't you hope you get well, buddy? Don't you maybe end up with a game ball out of this deal? Working our way down to the half minute mark. The Falcons have lost now 14 straight when this one's over. It's been two years since they've been able to win on the road, and that's been the story of the franchise problems. Gary Glanville was convinced his team could turn it around here today, and through one half they did, but definitely not in the second half. Bobby Brister, he's going to lose a little money from the league, but that's a pretty I good I can toss. catch it. I can catch it. You got close. <laughs> you got close. Chuck Knoll and Jerry Glanville, I don't think we'll meet for a handshake. That goes without saying. That's win number 198 over 22 years. And the Pittsburgh Steelers have come back from a halftime deficit to beat the Atlanta Falcons 21-9 here at Three Rivers Stadium.